let's uh, begin again our uh, discussion of Kabbalah, which is an ancient Judaic mystical tradition that is the underlying and foundational tradition that really uh, um, underlies and supports all the Western mystery, mystery traditions in general. Specifically, um, it is connected with the Hermetic tradition. It is also connected with Freemasonry. It is also connected with the study of Tarot and other traditions as well, as we'll see tonight. So, I'm going to cover a lot of ground here. I'm going to move kind of fast. The Sephirotic Tree of Life is the main symbol of the Kabbalistic tradition. This is a uh, symbolic tree that is drawn with ten spheres or circles, okay? And these are called Sephirot. Sephirot is, it means emanation, okay? It's plural word. Sephira is the singular. And emanation or a, a basic essence or quality, something that arises, okay? That's what this is, what this word means, okay? So if you hear this, the, the tree of the Sephirot or the Sephirotic tree of life, you, you'll know we're talking about the Kabbalistic tree of life. And these images are uh, that I'm going to be referring to. It's much it's going to be much easier if you're looking at the images as we're talking about this. Um, the the sephirot or the emanations, the spheres on this tree of life, are connected by different paths. Okay, in an arrangement, and these paths represent different aspects. They represent Hebrew characters of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, they represent tarot cards. When, because tarot and Kabbalah need to be studied in conjunction with each other, okay? Uh, uh, tarot is also all about the qualities of the self and the universe. Uh, they call it the, the book of life, and it is basically a pictorial, symbolic representation of the soul's journey through life, as is the tree of life as well, as we will see. Now, these ten sephirot, they are spoken about in the um, tradition of the Kabbalah as emanations or qualities, and there are prescriptions against adding or taking away. You'll see this as a recurrent theme when you study um, religion in general, specifically Judaism, the, the, Torah, the study of the Torah, and the ancient books of the uh, Kabbalah, like the Zohar. They, uh, there is a prescription often given in these books that it is considered blasphemy or uh, tr something tragic will occur if anything is removed or added. So books of the Bible, you'll often hear this warning and you see this come up in the Kabbalistic tradition, specifically in the Zohar, because there are ten sephirot on the tree of life in Kabbalah. There are not nine and there are not eleven. Okay, and this is said in the Zohar that it is considered, you know, a blasphemy to speak of either nine sephirot or eleven sephirot. It is prescribed prescribed not to think about, not to uh, consider any more than nine, uh, any more than ten, or any less than ten. So not nine, not eleven. And you will see on the image there seems to be eleven spheres, but this um, one that is completely behind the tree. Uh, if if you can make out the letters, it, it says dot, d a a t h dot. Okay, dot is called the um, hidden realm. Okay, it is not one of the sephirot. It is a hidden sphere or a um, a truly occulted realm. And some people in Kabbalah speak of this realm as. Um, the void of the subconscious, the, the realm that we go into to connect to higher levels of consciousness through meditation. It is um, the unspoken, it is the, the abyss, the veiled aspect of ourselves, okay? It is the, the part that really, the part of ourselves that we really connect with when we are silent, when we go into uh, wordless contemplation or meditation and this connects us to the infinite source and 
the 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 realm of dot, uh, and I'm I'm kind of jumping ahead to something that is more advanced. You know, I just want to talk about this in relation to that it is not one of the sephirim. There are ten, and this is not one of them. It is not considered one of the emanations on the tree, but rather dot is considered one of the uh, the, the places from which the tree emerges. So this is kind of the, I guess you could call it the realm of the birthing of the tree of life. Okay, the bir like the birthing of the soul. And these are all the soul qualities. So it's like kind of um, the, a cosmic womb of sorts. Okay, and it is a hidden realm. Some people call it the realm of hidden knowledge. It is kind of likened to the Akash in other traditions, in Eastern tradi traditions. Okay, so if you've heard of the Akashic records, this is some some people liken this to what dot represents in Kabbalah and there are different interpretations on this so my word is not the final one but I'm giving you my understanding of it from my readings and study okay so let, let's start to break down the ten sephirot the first realm uh, on the tree the first sephirot is Keter that is up at the top okay this is uh, the crown, okay? This is the Ancient of Days, as they call it in Kabbalah. And what this is, is basically cosmic consciousness. It's the highest level of awareness. And Malkuth, down at the bottom of the tree, where the tree uh, stands upon, the base of it, is the physical uh, world. It is the material realm. This is... Uh, you know, a material identified state of awareness. And then the other spheres are all different aspects and qualities of, of the self. So at the top we have Keter, and then to the right, on what is called the Pillar of Mercy, we have Hokmah. Okay, Hokmah means uh, wisdom. It's what we do with what we know. On the left-hand side from Hokmah, we have Binah, B-I-N-A-H. This means understanding. So this is simple knowledge. Okay. Um, has said on the right hand side, on the pillar of mercy, the, this right hand path of the tree. Okay, it means mercy. Has said. On the left hand side of the pillar of severity, right in the middle, for which it is named, is Geburah, which means severity. So these are different aspects of how we can deal with ourselves with others in the world uh, we can exercise self-control which would be like Gebura or we could ex act, uh, exercise um, influence upon others which would be Hesed. Um, Tiferet in the very middle of the tree is the uh, heart this is the care qualities of the individual we had a little bit of technical problems those are cleared up and I was talking about how there's 10 sephirot or emanations on this tree and uh, they di represent different aspects of the personality, the psyche, soul qualities in other words and they're arranged on three vertical paths so if you look at image number one on the site you will see that there is three uh, pillars or paths the pillar of severity is on the left the pillar of mercy is on the right and the pillar of mildness, sometimes referred to as the pillar of will, is between the two in the middle, uh, referred to as the middle pillar simply sometimes. So um, the pillar of severity we shouldn't look at as something that is uh, dark or evil. It, it is internal. These are internal or uh, yin qualities of the individual. The pillar of mercy are the uh, so the, the pillar of severity on the left hand side is the lunar pillar the pillar of mercy on the right hand side is the solar pillar these are the active qualities or the masculine qualities the yang energy qualities of the individual the pillar of mildness or will in the middle are the synthesis between the two or they are unitary qualities of the individual that lean neither toward the uh, active or passive the masculine or feminine okay um, so 
Keter at the top. This is uh, the, the Sefer wrote number one. Now, how they, how they go in order, I was starting to tell people this last week, but this is the order. You start at the top, and that's one, where it says Keter, okay? Then you go to the right, and that's the second one, Hokmah. Then back to the left, and that's Binah. So we're going to go in like a lightning bolt pattern, okay? So it's going to go from the top, then to the right, then to the left, back to the right, back to the left. Okay, then we would go to Tiferet in the middle, then down to the bottom of the Pillar of Mercy, mercy Netzah, and then Hod. So I'll give you the order real quick, okay? Keter is number one. Number two is Hokmah on the right, the pill top of the Pillar of Mercy. Number three is Binah at the top of the Pillar of Severity. Number four is Hesed. That's the middle of the pillar of mercy on the chart there, okay? That means mercy. Keter means crown. Hokmah means wisdom. Binah is understanding. That's three, okay? Four, Hesed, on the middle of the right-hand pillar means mercy. To the left of, the, uh, of, of Hesed is Geburah, that's at the left-hand side of the, the middle of the pillar of severity. Geburah is severity. Okay, the middle of the tree, right on the middle pillar, is Tiferet. Okay, Tiferet is beauty. This corresponds to the heart or care. Okay, Netzah, okay, that's Tiferet is number six. Netzah is number seven. That's at the very base of the pillar of mercy. On the right hand side, Netzah. That's victory. Okay? It would correspond to will power. Hod on the left hand side. At the bottom of the pillar of severity. That's Sephirot number eight. Hod is splendor. Okay? Yesod in the middle on the middle pillar, just above Malkut. That's Sephirot Sephira number nine. Okay? And this is foundation. And then Malkut is the bottom one at the very base of the tree. Okay? And this is the physical plane. This is the material world. Malkut. It means kingdom. So, let's start there. And if you're looking at image number one, it says Kabbalah, tree of life. It has the tree itself, the pillars listed, all of the sephirot are labeled, and then there are attributions on the right, and you see that there are four realms that this tree is divided up into. Um, we'll get into those in a moment and how they correlate to different aspects of the personality as well. So Malkut, the bottom of the tree, sephirot number 10, okay? And you see it has a symbol there where it's, uh, it's the symbol of earth, and it's broken into four. It's an equal armed cross with a circle around it, uh, the four quadrants. The, this represents earth, air, water, and fire, or the material realm, the material plane. And Malkut is the base, base level of awareness and consciousness. It is our physical instincts. It is our um, uh, simply... Um, physical life, lives, okay? It is the, the, the physical aspects of the individual. Uh, some people call them the animalistic attributes, okay? Um, these are simply uh, base instincts and survival needs. That's what Malkuth represents. It corresponds to the base chakra, okay? And I'll, I'll go over that in a moment when we look at image number two, okay? Um, Above Malkut is Yesod. Now, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the Kabbalistic worlds as I talk about the um, uh, Sephirot, Sephirot, okay? So, Malkut is the bottom of this tree, and this corresponds to the, the Kabbalistic world. There are four worlds in Kabbalah, as they are known. Um, and this is the lowest of the four, okay? It's called Asiyah. A-S-S-I-A-H. Asiya is the physical world or the material plane. As we've already talked about, that's what Malkuth is associated with. 
and this is uh, on the image, I've given it the Hebrew character He, because the, in the uh, four-letter name of God in Hebrew, it's called the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter name of God, is uh, yod He vav He. That comes, transliterates into English as uh, Y-H-V-H, which we pronounce Yahweh or Jehovah, Yehovah, okay? And this, uh, this is the uh, final character in the name. Uh, it corresponds to the element of earth, which I've put there over on the right-hand side with its alchemical symbol. So, Asiya is the physical world, the material plane, or the element of earth, and it corresponds with Malkuth. Now, as we move above and out of the pure identification with the physical world, we have other attributes that we develop uh, in the course of our lives, and we, we basically start to uh, go up into higher planes of development. The first is the mental plane, then the emotional plane, then the, the plane of the will. And uh, these correspond with different sephirot, okay? Specifically, they correspond with, with what are called uh, the triangles. There are three triangles that form the other nine sephirot, okay? So we have Yesod, Hod, and Netzah, and that's the world of Yetzira, the formative world or the mental plane. Okay, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll be getting to these as we explain each sephirot in detail. Yesod is the next um, sephira, and this means foundation. Now, this is the desire um, aspect of the personality. And again, it could be positive or negative, but in its positive aspect, it represents uh, desire to want to know, to want to improve oneself desire to want to get out of the purely uh, materialistically identified realm and get to a higher level of consciousness. So to come out of Mal Malkuth and to go uh, up into higher levels of development is what Yesod really represents. It's the beginnings of initiation. And as we s saw last week and a few weeks ago when we studied the chakras, um, this sphere would correspond to the um, sacrum chakra. Okay, which is the desire chakra near the genitals of the body. So this is the um, the the desire center of the individual, and this is the the first place that we connect for beginning uh, or initiation into higher levels of of knowledge and awareness. Uh, above Yasod to the left is Hod, okay, Sephira number eight, and this is uh, splendor, and another word that I would use in place of that would simply be courage, because this is the uh, this um, horizontal bar that connects Hod and Netzah represents uh, the 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 solar plexus chakra, okay, and this is uh, Hod and Netzah together represent the solar plexus because the the solar plexus represents the will center of the body or guts in general courage. So it's not just courage, but it's then uh, action, okay? Um, so hold would be the internal qualities of that aspect of uh, willpower, and which is courage. And netza is the external attributes, which is taking action in the world or, or actual willpower to do things. So that's called victory, netza. So these two together, it's, a, it's a, what's called a dualistic chakra, one uh, a, or a du dualistic sephiro. That's why they're on that, that bar uh, that actually uh, is like kind of like a rung on a ladder. Again, the uh, Kabbalistic tree is often referred to as the ladder to God. And that's very important. Hoda netza, if you bring them together, they form the solar plexus chakra, okay, in the middle. And it's sim there's simply two different aspects of that, uh, th those qualities within the individual. Again, the pillar of severity, you could look at that as the internal qualities. So hold would represent courage. And the external qualities uh, on the pillar of mercy, netzah would represent actual action in the world, getting things done, willpower to get things done. Okay? Now, this is where we left off last week w with Tiferet. Okay, Tiferet is 
um, beauty. That's the very middle of the tree of life. And you see it has the most connections to it because this is what the universe centers around. And it is, it's, it's given the attribute of the sun in the Kabbalistic tradition. Tiferet represents the heart chakra as well. And this is the realm of beauty or care or concern. Um, it is um, love, essentially, love energy. The generative principle, care, that's what Tiferet is all about. And uh, when, when in the Christian tradition they say, none come to the Father but through me, and these are words attributed to Jesus, we see that Keter is the Father, and it's the Ancient of Days, okay? And that represents the, uh, the um, you know, uh, actual God, um, or the Creator God, okay? Tiferet represents the, the son of that quality, okay, of that force, which um, its attribution is the sun. We see in astrotheology how Jesus is a representation of the sun, which we studied in previous weeks. And we can see that it is the path along the middle pillar that you must pass through to get to Keter from Malkuth. Okay, the Yesod is on the middle pillar as well, right before um, Tiferet is the care center, and that is the middle of the tree of life. The most connections are made to this because, again, this represents the generative principle, and this is what really uh, the universe is centered around. So uh, it is probably the most important sef sephira on the tree of life, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is what we really have to get in touch with if, we're, if we are going to get up to the high levels of this, uh, this climb in consciousness. And, um, you know, so it is true. None come to the Father but through, through uh, the Son. Um, uh, this is a Kabbalistic um, uh, allegory, so to speak, okay? It's, uh, it's a Kabbalistic attribution that's really being spoken there for those who understand it. Um, above Tiferet to the left, you get to um, Sephirot number five, which is Geburah. That means severity. And again, this is a quality that um, uh, of self-control, of working upon oneself, um, you know, of uh, sometimes needing to reel in uh, qualities within ourselves that are out of control. Um, this is the, uh, the, the thing that I call dominion, self-mastery, or uh, simply uh, achieving sovereignty, being a being that as you think, so you feel and so you act. And then action is connected with this because these are two aspects of the same chakra. Geburah and Hesed, when they come together, uh, when we bring them together on the middle pillar, they represent the throat chakra. Okay, and this is all about influence. How we can we can speak severely or with mercy. Okay, we can we can chastise or we can encourage. Okay, we can invoke fear or we could uh, inspire. Okay, so different aspects of the way we speak. Um, this is, um, uh, yeah, th these two spheres are about how we interact with ourselves and with others in the world. So hesed is mercy, and this is uh, influence of others. And it, it could be dark influence as well. When we talk about, you know, th there's a corresponding tree to this in Klopotic Kabbalah, which is called the tree of death. And all of the attributes are all about the pure negative qualities within the individual and, you know, how they can influence other people to do their bidding and do their will and manipulate their mind. So I'll be briefly talking about Klipoth uh, later in the show. But Hesed on the pillar of mercy is influence of other people around you, okay? Being uh, an inspiration, uh, helping to... Um, helping to help others to attain higher levels of awareness if we use it in the proper aspect. Okay, Bina at the, this is uh, Sephiroth number three, Sephiroth number three now, and this is on the top of the pillar of severity on the left-hand side. Bina means understanding, and understanding is an intellectual quality, and it is simply uh, pure knowing, and it is the... Um, the internal quality again it is what we the knowledge that we carry within us through our experiences through our readings through our studies through you know who we talk to who we pay attention to what we watch and listen to as far as media goes etc these are these are all the mental qualities of 
of the individual. Bina is the internal qualities of knowledge, okay? And it is simply what we know, okay? So this is, again, at, on the pillar of severity, which is the internal pillar. So it is simply knowledge or understanding. Related to um, the, the, the realm of basic knowledge, the knowledge that we carry around with us, uh, it's an internal quality because it's simply what we know, not what we do with what we know. What we do with what we know would relate to Hokmah, which is Sefer on number two, uh, at the um, at the top of the pillar of mercy. So uh, Sefer, Sefer number two, Hokmah, at the top of the pillar of mercy on the right hand side would would relate to what we do with what we know. And uh, that is wisdom. That's what Hokmah is connected with, wisdom. So um, um, that is the last sephirah before Keter. Keter is, of course, the crown, which represents the highest level of, cos uh, of uh, consciousness that human beings can attain to. And it uh, is... Uh, the top of the pillar of mildness or the middle pillar. So if you look to the right of this chart, you will see different um, attributions given to these uh, levels of the tree. Um, the three triangles, yes, so uh, the three sephira that form a triangle uh, between Yesod, Hod, and Natsah, just above um, Malkut, rep represents the world called Yetzira, or the formative world. This is the mental plane. It is the uh, alchemical attribution of the air. So, you know, earth, air, water, and fire uh, are how the uh, alchemical attributions progress in upward progression, earth being the lowest and fire being the highest. These correspond to the four worlds in Kabbalah, with Asya being the lowest on the physical or material plane, and then yet zero um, above that, which is the formative world, uh, the, the world of formation, which is where ideas begin to take shape. Bria is the uh, world above yet zero. And this represents uh, the creative world or the emotional plane. So this is the alchemical symbol of water, as you see it there on the chart. This is an internal quality, okay? And this, uh, the triangle that is represented on the Kabbalistic tree is the one that is formed with three, the three sephirot of Tiferet, Yebura, and Hesed. It's a downward pointing triangle as a, uh, yes, uh, is a downward pointing triangle as is the triangle that, uh, is formed, uh, by Yesod, Hod, and Netzah, or the, um, world of Yetzira. So Bria is, uh, the, I guess you could call it the, uh, sacred feminine aspect of the worlds of Kabbalah. It is, um, the internal, uh, aspects. It is the, the, uh, purely created world. Some people call this the, uh, uh the, the astral plane, the astral world or the astral plane. Now, above that is one more realm that is even uh, higher in consciousness, and it is closer to pure source. Uh, without any form at all, and it's called absolute. Absolute is the archetypal realm. This is uh, the world of just pure uh, archetypal imagery. Um, it's a pure idea. It's pure spirit, if you will. Okay, it's alchemical fire. It's the realm of will and spirit from which all things that come into formation uh, originate. So this is given the Hebrew character Yod, which is uh, um, the first name in the Tetragrammaton, and it, it also corresponds with the alchemical uh, symbol of fire. So these four worlds are all different aspects of the individual, and it represents basically uh, Asiya, the physical world, that represents what we have, our uh, physical attributes, the situation we might be born into, what uh, resources we have in the world. Uh, it could correspond with money. It could correspond with, you know, uh, what our talents, our basic talents are. Yet zero is the formative or mental plane. This would correspond with, you know, uh, 
how we use our mind. Uh, it, would, it would basically relate to the things that we study and take into ourselves intellectually and uh, our capacities in that regard. Bria, the creative world or the emotional plane, is how we use our heart. And again, Tiferet is based in this world, and this is basically care. It's our water. You know, how do you carry your water, in other words? So this is the realm that has to do with the generative principle, the creative world, care. How, what we care about is what we create. Absolute, the archetypal world is the world of pure spirit or the plane of will. Um, it's ultimately what drives everything. And that's the archetypal world, and that's alchemically uh, attributed to the concept of fire. Now, moving to the next image here, to move along in these concepts, we see the tree of life and its relationship to the chakras. I was briefly explaining this last week, but I made a visual representation of it. Uh, we talked about the planetary system uh, corresponding to the chakras of the body, and here we see a chart in image number two that basically relates all of these uh, concepts together. If we collapse the three dualistic sephirot into one along the middle pillar, we would get the seven chakras. The base or muladhara chakra, the root chakra, and I corresponded that to Saturn in the uh, uh, attributions related to the planets when it comes to correlating them with the, uh, the chakras of the body. Um, the Sierra uh, Yesod on the tree of life corresponds to the sacrum chakra, the Swadhisthana chakra. Uh, I corresponded that to Jupiter along the, uh, the planetary solar system chakra points, if you will. And Hod and Netza would both correlate to uh, the uh, solar plexus chakra or the planet Mars. Uh, Tiferet is the, uh, or beauty would correspond to the heart chakra as we talked about. The, um, the Anahata chakra, that is, okay. The throat chakra or the Vishuddha chakra corresponds to the, um, the seers of Deborah and Hesed. Uh, progressing upward on the tree of life. Again, another dualistic uh, sephirot, which when combined form the throat chakra. Uh, Buddha and Hokma, um, uh, when they come together, form the Yajna chakra, or the third eye chakra, or the, the planet Mercury. The throat chakra, of course, corresponds to Venus, the heart chakra with Earth. Okay? Um, the non Hokma correspond to the third eye chakra or mercury. They are, they are the mercurial aspects. And what we know and then what we decide to do with what we know. And Keter represents the crown chakra. Again, this is pure being, higher level of awareness, cosmic consciousness, Christ consciousness, if you will. And this corresponds to the Sahasrara chakra or the crown chakra of the body. And there are the seven chakras as it relates to the seven levels of the Kabbalistic tree of life. Uh, we see that this, if we move to num image number three, we see that this is what the menorah, which is a uh, Jewish uh, candelabra that is used um, uh, during Passover. This is about um, uh, the tree of life as well. It's a, uh, a different orientation of the tree of life and the ten sephirot. I want to talk about the, uh, the other soul qualities that are spoken about in Kabbalah as it relates to the four worlds. Um, we see at the bottom there, Nefesh, the animal soul, and this is, uh, correlates to, um, uh, if you look at the four worlds, this correlates to uh, Afiat, or the physical plane. Uh, he calls it the animal soul. This is just basically the, the root instincts of the individual. Above that, uh, corresponding to Yetzirah, is Ruach, which is the mind's eye. This is our intellectual capacities. Of course, this corresponds to the uh, um, uh, Vav character in the Tetragrammaton, which you see a visual, a nice visual depiction there on the left. Okay? Um, above that, uh, this would correspond to the world of Bria, which is Neshama. Neshama uh, is intuition. This is the sacred feminine quality. Again, that world corresponded with water, and it's the first hay character in Yotei Vav Hay. And above that, we have the universal life force, 
okay, or alchemical fire. This is Atzeluf in the uh, worlds of Kabbalah, in the four worlds, and this is this universal life force is known as Chia. So these are the four um, life qualities or soul qualities in Kabbalah. Uh, we, we see over and over again that uh, one, four, seven, and ten are sacred numbers in the, in the Kabbalistic tradition. Um, these uh, these come up over and over again. Um, there's four other principles I want to talk about. Concepts. These are the three levels of, of the the, the um, nothingness that are spoken about in Kabbalah, and then the dark realm or the hell world called Klippot. So we, if you look at image number five, you often see this uh, depicted above the tree of life. These three levels of of, of nothing, as they talk about it in the Kabbalah, of the void. These are realms that uh, are realms of uh, the, the creator, the intelligence itself. And uh, they are called the Ein Sof Or, which is the boundless light, which is above uh, Keter. This Keter, again, is, we're talking about, we talk about the Kabbalistic tree. This is the, uh, the divines uh, breaking up into different aspects. So it can experience itself in in the uh, physical world, the, the physical domain or dimension that we live in. So this is about the elevation of human consciousness to levels of uh, uh, higher levels of awareness, ending with Keter, and then above that we have you know the, the unified realm that they look at as having three levels to it. Um, the line so far being the boundless light, this is kind of what they refer to as the light in Freemasonry when they say fiat looks, let there be light. Um, you know, the creator, the first words of the creator spoken in Genesis. Uh, the, the light of the Creator, in, in, Kab, uh, in Kabbalah, this is considered the Ein Sof, or, or what is called the boundless or limitless light. Above that realm, you have something that is even beyond the light, which is the uh, potentiality of creation, which is the boundless itself. This is just, there's, there's no physical dimension to it whatsoever. It is just boundlessness and limitlessness. People look at this as pure empty space, and uh, you know the, the the nothingness between the stars, so to speak. Um, and then finally, you have the Ein, which is just nothing, pure void, the absolute potentiality that is uh, underlies all of creation, uh, the no thing that from which the everything emerges, the silence from which uh, all vibration emerges. So. These are kind of very heady, abstract concepts, but I figured I'd put them in there nonetheless because they're considered important concepts in Kabbalah. And uh, finally, underneath the tree of life, there is a realm as well. So this is the concept of correspondence in the Hermetic tradition, which is also uh, taught in the Kabbalistic tradition of as above, so below. As there are regions above the tree, there are regions below the tree. And uh, I put this region in red and uh, labeled it. It is known as Klippot. Klippot is the dark realm, deep subconscious realms that underlie physical creation. And some people say are the hell worlds that are uh, sometimes uh, disincarnate consciousnesses may want to enter our uh, physical dimension from. And you, you hear about different researchers talking about that uh, what's really going on is that people are actually inhabited by other consciousnesses from other dimensions that want control and want to feed off of fear. And this is what Klippot is. Klippot is this hell world where um, it is... Um, basically the deepest and darkest recesses of the human subconscious that connect with uh, other dimensions of existence that are very dark and not uh, geared toward the elevation or mastery of the individual, but toward the control of the individual. And dark Kabbalists practice what is known as Klopotic Kabbalah. And in the Klopotic Kabbalah, there is a whole other tree, which I have not talked about, which is called the tree of death, not the tree of life. So um, if you do further study on that and re research Klopotic Kabbalah, this is the black magical side of Kabbalah. And this is what the sorcerers of the world use. It is one of the um, 
methodologies that they use to gain access to our subconscious and control us and put us on strings like puppets through our desires and our fears. It's, this is the realm of fear, is what I, how I would describe clip hope. Okay, clip hope is the realm of fear. It is the, the realm of dark negative energy. Okay, it is the, the it's the antichrist um, realm, so to speak. This is the not the, the realm of the light of the creator as the I'm so for I'm so for nine are, but this is the realm of the demon world. Okay, so um, I, that's all I'll say about it for now, but. It's an interesting study. It's uh, more difficult to get information on Clopatic Kabbalah. Uh, maybe I can post some because I do have some in my library. And uh, I'll try to do my best to put some good resources up on the website for people to look into further, and I'll do that sometime tomorrow. So um, finally, I'm going to wrap up tonight with a breakdown of uh, Kabbalah when it comes to the uh, tarot. Um, and this is an even more fascinating study, in my opinion. Tarot is one of my favorite um, mystical traditions. It is a very rich tradition symbolically and spiritually. And if you really understand what these cards are speaking to us, it's a beautiful tradition. So um, on images number seven and eight uh, in, on the website, we see two trees. Uh, the first tree... Number, image number seven, I didn't get a chance to label it. I put this up last minute, uh, and I'll label it probably for the podcast images. Um, we see the microcosmic tree of life, okay? Image number eight is known as the macrocosmic tree. Now, these, all of these cards form the major arcana of the tarot deck. The major arcana is, arcana means knowledge, and the major knowledge is the higher realm of knowledge. This is the knowledge of the soul and the universe and its relationship to each other, their relationship to each other. The lower realms are the realms of the personality, okay, the lower knowledge, the, the minor arcana, okay, and these are the decks in the tarot, and they correlate to the playing card decks, okay, so... Only appropriate that we leave it off there this week. I won't go any further. I'll leave it there. And um, we have about a minute left. Um, like I said, we'll talk about more about tarot next week. Maybe I can complete this breakdown of the microcosmic and macrocosmic trees. And then we can look at the tradition of the tarot. Hopefully we won't have too many uh, audio difficulties. Uh, looks like that, that was all blizzard related. We have a, we're in a full blown blizzard here in Philadelphia today. But um, I guess that's all we have time for, folks. I want to thank everybody for listening. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to take more calls. Um, you can listen to What on Earth is Happening right here on the Intel Hub News Network. I'll see everybody right here next week. Thank you, everybody. Me and my buddy Jack Jones, people, we like to go down a restaurant.